please welcome to the stage one of our dinner chairs for the evening, Scott Santi. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. Let me add my welcome and my deepest thanks for your presence here tonight and for all your support of the Council. It is my distinct honor to present this evening's second Global Leadership Award to Susan Schwab. Ambassador Schwab's distinguished career has spanned the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. She is currently a strategic advisor in Mayor Brown's international trade practice, where she offers cross-practice and cross-office counsel to Mayor Brown's clients on a wide range of issues and policies. In addition to her role at Mayor Brown, Ambassador Schwab is also a professor of public policy at the University of Maryland, where she previously served as dean. Ambassador Schwab served as U.S. Trade Representative from 2006 to 2009 and Deputy United States Trade Representative from 2005 to 2006. And during her tenure as the USTR, Ambassador Schwab successfully opened markets for U.S. products and services in every region of the world and across a variety of business sectors and industries. And she successfully concluded free trade agreements with Peru, Colombia, Panama, and South Korea. Ambassador Schwab also negotiated in the World Trade Organization's Doha Round with major economic powers, including the European Union, China, India, and Brazil. And she filed and resolved multiple cases in defense of U.S. commercial interests before the WTO. In total, Ambassador Schwab has more than three decades of international trade and policy experience in both the public and private sectors, and she currently serves as a member of the Board of Directors of Boeing, Caterpillar, FedEx Corporation, and Marriott International. And in addition, she re remains deeply committed to civic engagement and thought leadership through her service to numerous nonprofit and public policy advisory organizations. Ambassador Schwab, throughout your distinguished career, you have successfully represented the United States on the world stage in numerous roles, and through your leadership, you have fostered and strengthened global relationships on many fronts and at many levels. Tonight, the Chicago Council on Global Affairs is honored to present you with our 2019 Global Leadership Award in recognition of your outstanding achievements in the realm of international relations and your exceptional contributions in service to our country. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating this year's National Global Leadership Award honoree, Ambassador Susan Schwab. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so very much, and congratulations on your global competitiveness. Thank you to the Chicago Council for this great honor, um, and thank you, Evo, no hard feelings for your departure from the School of Public Policy when I was dean. Um, you, you apparently made good. Um, thank you to my board colleagues and friends who are here tonight. Bill Osborne, thank you for those kind words. Um, Boeing is represented here, FedEx is represented, Caterpillar uh, CEO Jim Umbleby and his colleagues, thank you very, very much for honoring me by, by being here tonight. And my Mayor Brown colleagues, so I'm, I'm really overwhelmed. Um, I'm in a field, trade policy, that's in a bit of turmoil at the moment. <laughs> um, so I, I am um, practicing gratitude. I'm working real hard to practice gratitude. So that's what I'm gonna talk briefly about. Um, I am grateful first and foremost for the Chicago Council and I should mention that uh, I have been a fan of this organization since at least the early 80s when I used to wait for the, those slim brochures with the uh, polling data on foreign policy attitudes to come out every four years. It was a very long time ago, but longitudinal data 
on foreign policy attitudes, including trade attitudes, was fundamental to my thinking about how foreign policy and international economic policy, including trade policy, should be conducted. And this is indeed a, a really, really magnificent organization. So thank you for honoring me and, and congratulations. Um, I am also grateful and honored to be uh, be here tonight with with um, fellow nominees. I met Rick this evening. David Miliband I've known for a number of years and I have been a longtime contributor to the IRC and your work at the IRC is, is really so very impressive and so very needed. In the field of trade policy, it's a bit of a stretch to be grateful these days, um, but I'm working on it. Um, I'm gonna list a couple of things. First and foremost, I am grateful, um, as one who speaks about trade policy and teaches about trade policy, that I no longer have to talk about the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act of 1930 uh, to find examples of how protectionism is bad for the economy and business. and employment, including small and medium-sized companies and multinationals. Um, I am grateful for the growing evidence that even where there are trade problems, they don't necessarily lend themselves to trade solutions. And we talked earlier this evening about the importance of education, that being a really, really good example of an approach that is not a trade policy approach, but certainly will put us in a much better place in terms of being globally competitive to address trade issues. Um, I am grateful for uh, the lessons that we are learning about enforcement of trade agreements. We negotiate trade agreements, and that includes, for example, China's accession to the World Trade Organization. We need to be rigorous in enforcing those agreements, and we need to be rigorous right from the beginning. And there are multiple administrations that uh, in retrospect wish they had been more rigorous, uh, Republicans and Democrats, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, you have to step outside of the, the rules to enforce trade agreements. You need to negotiate good trade agreements and you need to then enforce them. Um, I'm also uh, grateful that we now can see how very important it is in economic, commercial, political, and geopolitical terms to be working with like-minded countries uh, to address common international, including trade issues. Uh, I suspect there may only be a handful of people in Washington, and unfortunately in rather senior positions, uh, who don't regret at this point that the U.S. is not a part of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, Like a lot of the most important things that we've done in U.S. trade policy, it was launched by a Republican administration, the Bush administration, uh, in 2008, and then was uh, negotiated uh, to conclusion in the Obama administration. Uh, this would have been an awfully good time to have been a part of that coalition, uh, uh, because it does appear that America First in trade terms, feels an awful lot like America alone. Uh, I am grateful for the corporate executives, including a lot of folks in this room, and I spent a number of years working for Motorola uh, just up the street here. Well, a longer commute than that these days, but uh, up the street. Uh, for the corporate executives uh, who are standing up and speaking out about the importance of trade to the U.S. economy and U.S. competitiveness, uh, and hope you will keep up the same. I also think I'm grateful for the fact that trade politics appears to be coming back to its natural uh, bipartisan roots. Now, that's both good and bad. We have a, we appear to have a strong bipartisan group that is very anti-trade, both sides of the aisle, and that is unfortunate. You will recall at the end of the last presidential campaign, both the lead Republicans and Democrats running for the presidency opposed TPP, um, and uh, that was an unfortunate set of circumstances. And we have folks running for office now uh, on both sides of the aisle who oppose TPP. But one of the things that I think 
we can thank this president for is that there are Democrats who have run away from trade policy over the last, or more open trade over the last several decades, who appear to have rediscovered the importance of trade, and Republicans who have been quiet about the importance of uh, free trade and more open trade, and they appear to be coming together uh, to look at uh, trade policy in a more proactive and pro-US and pro-global trade agenda that can lift all of our economies so finally, I'm going to say that I'm grateful, I guess, for the fact that all major trading countries today, the US, the EU, Japan, India, basically all major trading countries out there are in violent violation of our WTO obligations. And why do I suggest that we should be, or might want to consider being grateful for that? Uh, the answer is, this is a unique opportunity for enlightened leaders to come together and try to unwind, rather than unravel, these very high trade barriers, and to pull back together this multilateral enterprise, the World Trade Organization, that has proven so very important to global trade, global economic growth, the uh, emergence of emerging economies, the lifting of hundreds of millions of people out of poverty uh, that brings us to the point where we are today. Um, and so I think I've got a few things to be grateful for, but in particular, thank you for this honor and thank you for being here this evening.